What makes the ALI so wonderful is that a bunch of very smart, very experienced people with very different backgrounds come together and there is a commitment to try to solve a problem. And the names that you see are the leading intellectuals, leading judges and academics in the nation. And that gives you some confidence that that work has really been thoroughly vetted. That's really where the magic lies, is that at the end of the day, you've got a document that has had a couple hundred eyes laid on it of people who all know something different and have all spent years and years working hard in this area. So at the end, it's not the product of the reporter or any one person, it's a product of a group and yet not a product of a committee. Knowing that you are working with and talking to and being listened to by some of the smartest people you'll ever meet. And that in, in itself is terrific. The work that we do is important. The law reform work is important. We do have an impact on uh, the development of the law, on the courts, on the legal profession. They trust us. They have good, sound reason to trust us, and that is because of the integrity and the competence and the intelligence of the people in this organization that ensure the quality of our work. There are always times you're going to disagree, because if you do that, it'll have an effect on discovery or it'll have an effect on some of the procedural issues that you might not otherwise think of. There's passionate feelings on both sides. They will feel totally comfortable standing up and, and trying to get the rest of the House, whether it's the counselor, to say, you're absolutely right, even though the draft doesn't quite reflect that, maybe we should. For one thing, we have people in the room who are highly knowledgeable. That leads to a level of respect and affection for the people in the room that is really quite remarkable. And very often the, the inquiry leads to a negative decision that, that it's too soon, we did this before and it's not time to change it, or, or even if we've never done it, that this subject uh, is too hot and and people uh, will scream at each other and you won't get consensus. Whatever the reactions are, sometimes it leads to the decision that we shouldn't go forward at that moment. The wonderful thing about it is it is principle-based disagreement. It's not personality-based at all. The disagreements are disagreements between people who all care about the same thing, which is getting it right, getting it accurate, getting it helpful for the bench and bar. And the best example to me uh, of our amazing culture was the discussion about the death penalty that we had. There was a lot of pressure from the membership, uh, more than from the council initially, in connection with uh, a larger project on sentencing. Uh, we began to look at the question of capital punishment again. This is not a question of personal preference, it's a matter of careful analysis. And I think the membership understood that, appreciated it, and was glad to see that over time the evolution of thought was such that uh, the council, as well as the membership, became quite comfortable with the idea that that was a section of the code that we should in fact say we no longer support. And I think it was a lesson for anyone in what informed, courteous discourse can bring to the table when you have complicated, highly emotional issues. The whole idea of the ALI is to present a product that people can rely on as the best view with respect to the resolution of an issue. And often you learn an enormous number of things from the judges and the practitioners that for me as an academic just didn't occur to you. When you have that sort of discussion, you can then refine what the legal doctrine ought to look like in a way that only improves it. And I think it's that combination of distinctive perspectives and concentrated thought 
that give them their authority, and I think that authority, the authority is a very well deserved. It is a restatement in the sense that no one is making it up, but they're choosing among things, among positions that are out there, to craft a sense of what the body of law in this area should look like going forward. There's no conference I go to, even the best academic conferences, that has the kind of conversation that happens at these, particularly the smaller group ALI meetings. We do address issues that uh, may be somewhat ahead of their time, and uh, after 20 or 30 years, if you go back and look at them, you say, they really got it absolutely right. There are a bunch of commercial study aids and summaries that are out there in the market, and I tell my students you don't need to look at any of them. What you need to do is look at the restatement of contracts uh, from the ALI. This organizes your thinking, it organizes the body of law, and it will be the best aid that you have. What the restatement does is collect the trends of research and guide it in ways that are helpful to today's practicing lawyers and today's judges uh, without having to go back and start at the beginning to see where did this doctrine come from, what exceptions ought, ought there be. What a judge most appreciates when confronted with that kind of problem is some kind of synthetic source that brings together uh, the body of existing law that uh, analyzes where courts have diverged and why, and makes some reasoned uh, analysis about what the um, driving factors are in one direction or another uh, in the law. The state Supreme Courts across so many different states have found them to be a reliable expression of the law in many different areas. I would say particularly torts and contracts, but everything ranging from choice of law to the law of trusts, the great common law areas. So it's just stated very well. Our procedures are very careful and time consuming that an awful lot of work is put into these projects. Some people think that that, in fact, is a handicap because these projects sometimes drag on an awfully long time. But because they do, I think eventually what comes out is generally uh, very satisfactory and impressive to the uh, larger legal community. You don't get that in briefs, right? The, the briefs are, by their nature, uh, adversarial. They're, it is the attorney's job to make the best argument for their client. But as a judge, my job is to enforce the law. Uh, so I love the restatement because it gives me, I'm just sure that it is a clear and concise and true statement of what the law is. You'll discover the bones, the structural bones of an area of the law. You'll get an enormous leg up on your national research and finding out what's going on around the country. There's always a need for law reform, for law simplification. We lawyers and judges have an ability to make things complicated, to add words, and there's always the need to step back and say, can't we get back to some basics here and make this simpler? We rely on a restatement as almost a Bible so that we can get the basic best practice of all of those different states and all of those different interpretations. It really is helpful. I think that the uh, aim of the American Law Institute in clarifying the law and organizing it and making it simple to understand uh, it has a great deal of appeal to judges and lawyers alike. In the end, all a restatement is, is advice to decision makers of what they should do when confronted with a decision. It carries no more influence than the quality of the ideas that are embodied in the document.
it needs to be supported because if it disappears, there will be never anything like it again. As our country is getting more polarized on the political front and on so many other fronts, we're a kind of oasis, not only an intellectual oasis, but we're a place where people can come and talk across various lines that might be dividing people in other, in other contexts. And knowing that they'll be considered fairly, uh, I think will have an increasing uh, importance and relevance. Nothing has ever captured my excitement like the American Law Institute. It's a place where I feel like I'm a tiny, tiny piece, but I'm a piece of developing something big, important, trustworthy, and worthy of great pride as well as great value. You wouldn't ordinarily think of this as a creative process, but it is. It's incredibly creative. You see imagination and intellect combined. It's almost like an academic type discussion, which also has all these people who've kind of just yesterday were doing the case and can tell you, you know, yeah, but we had this problem or this is the thing that you're not thinking about. Um, and so I learn a lot from these conversations uh, that's helpful to me in my work as a teacher and a scholar. It's also nice to be able to contribute to something that you hope is going to have an influence on making the law better. To interact even on a formal basis with some of the luminaries who have been on this council uh, while well, I've been here, and people but like Judge Lou Pollock, who recently died, people like Bennett Bosky, people like Judge William Webster, who was head of the CIA and the FBI, people like Sheila Birnbaum, who's just a, a, a giant in, in her field, Judge Pat Wald, whom I knew before, but a lot of people didn't know before interacting with her on the council, Conrad Harper, who's a former legal advisor to the State Department, Bob Mundheim, a former Treasury official and dean of Pennsylvania Law School, and, and I could go on and on. In my professional life, the luckiest break I ever got was to be involved in the ALI. It has made me such a much better lawyer uh, in every way than I ever thought I could possibly be. When people say, why do you spend so much time with the American Law Institute, I wish I could say I did it for the good of everyone, but the truth is, I'm the person that gets the biggest benefit out of it. This is one of the most wonderful organizations ever created. I would not have had the wit myself to do it, but the idea that we are concerned about the law and how it should function and how it does function is itself very exciting, intellectually challenging, but also it reaches the whole issue of value in society. What should we be doing? How should we order ourselves uh, in order to assure liberty? I not only enjoy it, I revel in being a member of the ALI.